In statistics, a confidence interval is a type of interval estimate of a population parameter. It is an observed interval in principle different from sample to sample. That frequently includes the value of an unobservable parameter of interest if the experiment is repeated. How frequently the observed interval contains the parameter is determined by the confidence level or confidence coefficient. More specifically, the meaning of the term confidence level is that if CI are constructed across many separate data analyses of replicated experiments, the proportion of such intervals that contain the true value of the parameter will match the given confidence level. Whereas two-sided confidence limits form a confidence interval, their one-sided counterparts are referred to as lower or upper confidence bounds. Confidence intervals consist of a range of values that act as good estimates of the unknown population parameter. However, the interval computed from a particular sample does not necessarily include the true value of the parameter. When we say, we are 99% confident that the true value of the parameter is in our confidence interval, we express that 99% of the hypothetically observed confidence intervals will hold the true value of the parameter. After any particular sample is taken, the population parameter is either in the interval realized or not. It is not a matter of chance. The desired level of confidence is set by the researcher. If a corresponding hypothesis test is performed, the confidence level is the complement of respective level of significance, i.e., a 95% confidence interval reflects a significance level of 0.05. The confidence interval contains the parameter values that, when tested, should not be rejected with the same sample. Greater levels of variance yield larger confidence intervals, and hence less precise estimates of the parameter. Confidence intervals of difference parameters not containing zero imply that there is a statistically significant difference between the populations. In applied practice, confidence intervals are typically stated at the 95% confidence level. However, when presented graphically, confidence intervals can be shown at several confidence levels, for example 90%, 95% and 99%. Certain factors may affect the confidence interval size including size of sample, level of confidence, and population variability. A larger sample size normally will lead to a better estimate of the population parameter. Confidence intervals were introduced to statistics by Jersey Neyman in a paper, published in 1937. Conceptual Basis Introduction interval estimates can be contrasted with point estimates. A point estimate is a single value given as the estimate of a population parameter that is of interest, for example the mean of some quantity. An interval estimate specifies instead a range within which the parameter is estimated to lie. Confidence intervals are commonly reported in tables or graphs along with point estimates of the same parameters to show the reliability of the estimates. For example, a confidence interval can be used to describe how reliable survey results are. In a poll of election voting intentions, the result might be that 40% of respondents intend to vote for a certain party. A 99% confidence interval for the proportion in the whole population having the same intention on the survey might be 30% to 50%. From the same data one may calculate a 90% confidence interval, which in this case might be 37% to 43%. A major factor determining the length of a confidence interval is the size of the sample used in the estimation procedure. For example the number of people taking part in a survey, meaning an interpretation for users of frequentist methods. Various interpretations of a confidence interval can be given. The confidence interval can be expressed in terms of samples. Were this procedure to be repeated on multiple samples, the calculated confidence interval would encompass the true population parameter 90% of the time. Note that this does not refer to repeated measurement of the same sample, but repeated sampling. 
The confidence interval can be expressed in terms of a single sample. There is a 90% probability that the calculated confidence interval from some future experiment encompasses the true value of the population. Parameter. Note this is a probability statement about the confidence interval, not the population parameter. This considers the probability associated with a confidence interval from a pre-experiment point of view. In the same context in which arguments for the random allocation of treatments to study items are made, here the experimenter sets out the way in which they intend to calculate a confidence interval and know, before they do the actual experiment that the interval they will end up calculating has a certain chance of covering the true but unknown value. This is very similar to the repeated sample interpretation above, except that it avoids relying on considering hypothetical repeats of a sampling procedure that may not be repeatable in any meaningful sense. See name and construction. The explanation of a confidence interval can amount to something like the confidence interval represents values for the population parameter for which the difference between the parameter and the observed estimate is not statistically significant at the 10% level. In fact, this relates to one particular way in which a confidence interval may be constructed. In each of the above, the following applies. If the true value of the parameter lies outside the 90% confidence interval, once it has been calculated, then an event has occurred which had a probability of 10% of happening by chance. Misunderstandings Confidence intervals are frequently misunderstood, and published studies have shown that even professional scientists often misinterpret them. A 95% confidence interval does not mean that for a given realized interval calculated from sample data there is a 95% probability the population parameter lies within the interval, nor that there is a 95% probability that the interval covers the population parameter. Once an experiment is done on an interval calculated, this interval either covers the parameter value or it does not. It is no longer a matter of probability. The 95% probability relates to the reliability of the estimation procedure, not to a specific calculated interval. Neyman himself made this point in his original paper. It will be noticed that in the above description, the probability statements refer to the problems of estimation with which the statistician will be concerned in the future. In fact, I have repeatedly stated that the frequency of correct results will tend to alpha. Consider now the case when a sample is already drawn and the calculations have given particular limits. Can we say that in this particular case the probability of the true value falling between these limits is equal to alpha? The answer is obviously in the negative. The parameter is an unknown constant and no probability statement concerning its value may be made. De Bromeo expands on this further as follows. It must be stressed, however, that having seen the value of the data, Neyman-Pearson theory never permits one to conclude that the specific confidence interval formed covers the true value of zero with either 100% probability or 100% degree of confidence. Seidenfeld's remark seems rooted in a desire for Neyman-Pearson confidence intervals to provide something which they cannot legitimately provide, namely, a measure of the degree of probability, belief, or support that an unknown parameter value lies in a specific interval. Following Savage, the probability that a parameter lies in a specific interval may be referred to as a measure of final precision. While a measure of final precision may seem desirable, and while confidence levels are often interpreted as providing such a measure, no such interpretation is warranted, admittedly. Such a misinterpretation is encouraged by the word confidence. A 95% confidence interval does not mean that 95% of the sample data lie within the interval. A confidence interval is not a range of plausible values for the sample mean, though it may be understood as an estimate of plausible values for the population parameter. A particular confidence interval of 95% calculated from an experiment does not mean that there is a 95% probability of a sample mean from a repeat of the experiment falling within this interval. 
philosophical issues the principle behind confidence intervals was formulated to provide an answer to the question raised in statistical inference of how to deal with the uncertainty inherent in results derived from data that are themselves only a randomly selected subset of a population. There are other answers, notably that provided by Bayesian inference in the form of credible intervals. Confidence intervals correspond to a chosen rule for determining the confidence bounds, where this rule is essentially determined before any data are obtained, or before an experiment is done. The rule is defined such that over all possible data sets that might be obtained, there is a high probability that the interval determined by the rule will include the true value of the quantity under consideration. That is a fairly straightforward and reasonable way of specifying a rule for determining uncertainty intervals. The Bayesian approach appears to offer intervals that can, subject to acceptance of an interpretation of probability, as Bayesian probability, be interpreted as meaning that the specific interval calculated from a given dataset has a certain probability of including the true value conditional on the data and other information available. The confidence interval approach does not allow this, since in this formulation and at this same stage, both the bounds of the interval and the true values are fixed values and there is no randomness involved. For example, in the poll example outlined in the introduction, to be 95% confident that the actual number of voters intending to vote for the party in question is between 36% and 44%, should not be interpreted in the common sense interpretation that there is a 95% probability that the actual number of voters intending to vote for the party in question is between 36% and 44%. The actual meaning of confidence levels and confidence intervals is rather more subtle. In the above case, a correct interpretation would be as follows. If the polling were repeated a large number of times, each time generating about a 95% confidence interval from the poll sample, then 95% of the generated intervals would contain the true percentage of voters who intend to vote for the given party. Each time the polling is repeated, a different confidence interval is produced, hence, it is not possible to make absolute statements about probabilities for any one given interval. For more information, see the section on meaning and interpretation. The questions concerning how an interval expressing uncertainty in an estimate might be formulated, and of how such intervals might be interpreted, are not strictly mathematical problems and are philosophically problematic. Mathematics can take over once the basic principles of an approach to inference have been established, but it has only a limited role in saying why one approach should be preferred to another. For example, a confidence level of 95% is often used in the biological sciences, but this is a matter of convention or arbitration. In the physical sciences, a much higher level may be used. Relationship with other statistical topics Statistical hypothesis testing confidence intervals are closely related to statistical significance. Testing, for example, if for some estimated parameter theta one wants to test the null hypothesis that theta equals zero against the alternative that theta zero, then this test can be performed by determining whether the confidence interval for theta contains zero. More generally, Given the availability of a hypothesis testing procedure that can test the null hypothesis theta equals theta zero against the alternative that theta theta zero for any value, a theta zero, then a confidence interval with confidence level gamma equals one minus alpha can be defined as containing any number theta zero for which the corresponding null hypothesis is not rejected at significance level alpha. If the estimates of two parameters have confidence intervals that do not overlap, then the difference between the two values is more significant than indicated by the individual values of alpha. So, this test is too conservative and can lead to a result that is more significant than the individual values of alpha would indicate. If two confidence intervals overlap, the two means still may be significantly different. Accordingly, and consistent with the Mantle-Henschel chi-squared test, 
is a proposed fix whereby one reduces the error bounds for the two means by multiplying them by the square root of one half before making the comparison, while the formulations of the notions of confidence intervals and of statistical hypothesis testing are distinct. They are in some senses related and, to some extent, complementary. While not all confidence intervals are constructed in this way, one general purpose approach to constructing confidence intervals is to define a 100% confidence interval to consist of all those values theta 0 for which a test of the hypothesis theta equals theta 0 is not rejected at a significance level of 100 alpha percent. Such an approach may not always be available since it presupposes the practical availability of an appropriate significance test. Naturally, any assumptions required for the significance test would carry over to the confidence intervals. It may be convenient to make the general correspondence that parameter values within a confidence interval are equivalent to those values that would not be rejected by a hypothesis test. But this would be dangerous. In many instances the confidence intervals that are quoted are only approximately valid, perhaps derived from plus or minus twice the standard error, and the implications of this for the supposedly corresponding hypothesis tests are usually unknown. It is worth noting that the confidence interval for a parameter is not the same as the acceptance region of a test for this parameter, as is sometimes thought. The confidence interval is part of the parameter space, whereas the acceptance region is part of the sample space. For the same reason the confidence level is not the same as the complementary probability of the level of significance. Confidence region Confidence regions generalize the confidence interval concept to deal with multiple quantities. Such regions can indicate not only the extent of likely sampling errors but can also reveal whether it is the case that if the estimate for one quantity is unreliable then the other is also likely to be unreliable. Confidence band A confidence band is used in statistical analysis to represent the uncertainty in an estimate of a curve or function based on limited or noisy data. Similarly, a prediction band is used to represent the uncertainty about the value of a new data point on a curve but subject to noise. Confidence and prediction bands are often used as part of the graphical presentation of results of a regression analysis. Confidence bands are closely related to confidence intervals, which represent the uncertainty in an estimate of a single numerical value.